The rod of Jesse has blossomed. The virgin has brought forth one who is both God and man. God has restored peace, reconciling in himself the depths and the heights. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, and free us from every danger, so it may rejoice in your peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, as long as in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is being proclaimed, in that I rejoice. Indeed, I shall continue to rejoice, for I know that this will result in deliverance for me. Through your prayers and support from the Spirit of Jesus Christ, my eager expectation and hope is that I shall not be put to shame in any way, but that with all boldness now as always, Christ will be magnified in my body whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. And this I know with confidence that I shall remain and continue in the service of all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that your boasting in Christ Jesus may abound on account of me when I come to you again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. My soul, My soul is, is thirsting for the living God. As a hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul, my soul is thirsting, thirsting for the living God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? My soul is thirsting for the living God. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving, with the multitude keeping festival. My soul is thirsting for the living God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear this letter today from St. Paul, 
and he's speaking about, we hear the joy in his voice, that he shall, he shall continue to rejoice as he continues to preach the word, even though we know that he's in prison at this point. So he's imprisoned. If we know that his mission is to go out and share the gospel, yet he finds himself trapped in a prison, unable to go out, yet we don't see him falling into despair or woe is me or I would share the gospel and do what I'm called to do if only I had the means, but rather he continues to rejoice because he knows that he's still living in the Lord's will and he knows that he's still able, wherever he is, to continue to proclaim him and to live out of that hope that he has in Christ. Even for the loss of his life, which is likely at this point, he still has no fear. Whether he lives, for, he lives for Christ, whether he dies, he dies in Christ. So he has that resignation to his external circumstances, which comes from that deep humility he has, not in what he has about him, but merely that he knows he's in good standing with the Lord, and that he continues to live in that truth and to share it with others. And we hear elsewhere that in prison, he was able, because of that joy, because of that confidence that he had rooted in the Lord, in the midst of these bad circumstances, to continue to convert the guards and the prisons. And as we have today received his, these letters, he was able to dictate for the rest of the church. And we see a bit of that then, too, as we look at our gospel. Because our gospel... The Lord is able to speak the language of the people who are concerned about high standing and seats of honor and use that analogy in a way that they'd be able to get. That what matters most is humility. To take that lowest place, the Lord can raise us up. To accept, like St. Paul, those bad circumstances without worrying about it or wanting for more, but then letting the Lord take that and make the most out of that gift. And today we celebrate, as we do on most Saturdays, the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we know that she is the one who stands as that model of humility. The one who was the handmaid of the Lord, the servant of the Lord. A poor young girl that the Lord made, now the queen of heaven and earth. And so she stands as the example for us of taking that lowest place, receiving the grace that the Lord wants to give, without worrying too much or too worried about the other people and what they're going to think, but just trusting in the Lord and walking in that. And in that path of humility, then, it gives us that way to reach the heights and to find the one that our soul's longing for. This responsorial psalm we have today, it's, it's a beautiful one that speaks about the hind or the deer that longs for running streams. And in medieval iconography or religious art, the symbol of the deer, it symbolized the soul longing for God. Because the deer is the one that's able to climb up and prance up the mountains. And that mount always stands as that, that symbol of the heights of the Lord, the heights of holiness. And so we hear that our soul should be like that one which is searching, longing for the Lord. And this is a symbol that we hear throughout all the Old Testament. In Ezekiel, it was the dry bones. Those were so dry that they're thirsting for the Lord. That's the people of God. We hear this at the cross when Jesus, he's pierced and blood and water flows from his side. And it's that blood and water which then nourishes the souls of the Christians. We see that as an analogy at the beginning of baptism and the Eucharist, that life of grace. But then also at the very end, of the book of Revelation in chapter 22, we hear how this stream flows out from God himself throughout all of heaven and how it nourishes it. And so for us, it paints this picture for us to keep taking that lowest place, that seat of humility, to work with the gifts that we've been given and making sure that we're not filling up or taking that higher seat, exalting ourselves, so we're not filling up or trying to quench that thirst with anything other than the Lord. So we can attain him and attain that him which our soul truly thirsts for and longs for. Both here under the veil of the sacraments, then eventually longing for that glory of heaven where our thirst will be quenched.
Confident of God's providence, let us bring him our prayers. For Pope Francis and all our bishops, may they be sanctified by the gifts of the Holy Spirit for the good of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may they be filled with God's wisdom as they respond to the needs of the poor in their countries and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel despair, may God lift the cloud of darkness and fill them with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our faith community, may the Lord increase our charity and commitment to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may the Lord shine his face upon them and give them eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Leon Makanka and for Diane Dignan, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever loving and gracious Father, we humbly pray that you hear and answer the petitions we place before you today through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, these offerings of conciliation and praise, humbly asking that following the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may present our very selves as a holy sacrifice pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Graciousness is, graciousness is poured out upon your lips, for God has blessed you forevermore.
and for those joining us on the live stream, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having nourished us with heavenly food, O Lord, grant that according to the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may serve you in purity of life and magnify you with her in wholeness and wholehearted praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.